So uh, the growth hormone story is another one, uh, and the easiest way I sort of like to try and explain that to people is the, the lack of growth hormone when you're young, so hypo, classical hypopituitarism, leads to shorter stature, um, dwarfism. Uh, those individuals have an amount of muscle mass that's directly proportional to their stature. If you have hyperpituitarism, you're a giant. Uh, you're just tall. You, you don't have excessive muscle mass. Uh, you have it directly proportional to your stature. So growth hormone is a stimulator, stimulator of uh, stature, you know, your, your height. So it's, it's good for bones. It's actually really good for collagen. And everybody goes, collagen? Your bone is actually about 40% by composition protein. It's not just a stick of chalk. There's a layer of collagenous protein around it. But this may be where collagen has achieved its sort of notoriety, particularly in the supplemental form for athletes, is it stimulates collagenous tissue synthesis. And if you think about it, so you take testosterone, your muscles get bigger. Um, they probably get big enough that you can do ridiculous things in terms of lifting really heavy weights, but to the degree that you can tear your muscle right off of a tendon, um, and it happens. And so the, where the growth hormone comes in, this is my own personal theory, uh, is uh, it stimulates uh, collagenous synthesis, and so the tendons become stronger too. And laced throughout your muscle are, are, are collagenous proteins. So that's where growth hormone is beneficial. So we're in California, I'll invoke the, you know, Victor Balco and say, you know, you have to get the cream and you have to get the clear. Uh, and that's the steroid hormones and, and the growth hormone. You need both of them to be a big, strong guy. But, you know, uh, both of those hormones are pro-anabolic um, and therefore pro-cancer hormones. Chronic elevations of those hormones mess with a lot of systems that we just we're only beginning to understand. So um, excessive testosterone or high levels, great driver of prostate growth. Uh, excessive growth hormone, a great driver of lots of different uh, tissues, but um, it's lack, and this is where you've had Dr. Longo on the, on the show before. He shows in um, uh, certain populations of, uh, of dwarves, for example, who have a particular type of dwarfism um, and lack of growth hormone receptor, they're actually, they don't get cancer. So do we really want to mess with that system is, is, is my question. And I think that, uh, you know, us showing that they don't have a particularly huge role, at least within the normal variation is a lot different than people coming out to the extremes down here. And if you're clinically low in those hormones, by all means. Um, but for most guys, I'd stay away from that stuff. You have shown that androgen receptor content yeah. increases with resistance training and is correlated with muscle protein synthesis. Yep. But do, I, do I understand that correctly? Yep. What do you think then? Because the androgen, does testosterone also increase androgen receptor? So it probably does a little bit as a sort of a feed forward mechanism, but I think that there's a little bit of a feedback mechanism, the nature of which I'm not entirely sure, but that you, you can only get so much androgen receptor. But you're, you're entirely right, you know, as I said, the, the testosterone or other steroid hormones, estrogen as well, bind to receptors and those receptors turn on genes. And, and so the content of the receptors may be, we think anyway, uh, and others have shown the same thing, the rate limiting um, action of where the testosterone uh, probably is having any action, if it's having any action at all. And the same for estrogen, so. Okay, so, so, there, so there could be some, and maybe other metabolites I mean, yeah. that are binding to yeah, it. Yeah, so. we're, we're scratching You'll, the surface it, with the big ones. There's lots of other downstream uh, hormones that we're not looking at for sure. Well, that makes a lot of sense with the extremes because I, those were you pretty much answered my questions, which were you know you give you inject you know people with yeah. testosterone and yeah. muscle growth goes up, but it's super physiologic. Yeah. Same with yeah. growth hormone, though, right? I yeah, mean, absolutely. Super physio a physiologic. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's not just so much of the transient increase that you're getting from from the uh, exercise, but this constant 
like where it's just elevated right. for like hours and hours and hours. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, it's not like, like I said, the diurnal range is so ridiculously small as, as opposed to, you know, where steroids are or where growth hormone administration is that the, com the comparison of like normal changes, you know, I'm a high testosterone responder or I'm a low testosterone or I'm a high growth hormone, you know, et cetera. It, it's not the same as talking about somebody who's taking exogenous supplemental hormones. They're, they're completely different paradigms. So you can't invoke this as proof of, of that, if you like. The deficiency end is interesting, and I can see the clinical case for treating hypogonadal men if they have low testosterone, or kids with you know, classic hypopituitarism to get them to a, probably not the stature that they would have if they're completely normal, but certainly not short. Some people choose not to do it. Some people just say, no, that's, that's, that's how I was born, that's the way it is. Um, I, I can respect that, but at the same time, you could make a case. The, 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 where I differ with some of these sort of exogenous, they call themselves anti-aging clinics, is that the anti-aging that you get as a result of taking the hormone is maybe at the expense of overstimulation of anabolic or cell division, cancer, et cetera, uh, to the degree that it, it's doing you more harm than good. Um, and I think unless it's closely managed, um, you need to be aware of that. Are you talking about like hormone replacement therapy? What about people that are doing hormone replacement therapy that are mimicking more what your physiologic levels would be? And if that's, that's the paradigm. So if this is the normal range of testosterone, and most guys, they point out that it's quite right, wide, and it is. So you can be just this side of it or just this side of it, and, and, and you're at the low end of normal, and bringing you into the normal range, that's clinical treatment. And it's the same for women at menopause taking supplemental estrogen to bring themselves back to where they were premenopausally. I, I understand that. And, but that, those are closely monitored clinical situations or bringing you, you know, with growth hormone injections back to here. Uh, I think where the difference is, is, you know, the sort of, I'll call it the wild west of these anti-aging clinics where people just go take this and there's no monitoring of what happens or um, it's, a, it's a physique driven process. And so, you know, older guys say, look at me now. And I'm like, that's great, you look great. Uh, I hope there's nothing, you know, with your prostate or elsewhere that's growing, that's all.